Hello and welcome to Ask Ron. As always, I'm Ron. Today's questions all came. I only asked for questions a few hours ago. Only one person posted, but he posted a few of them. This is uh, Glenn Hill, Glenn from the UK. So these questions are all from one person. Here we go. Number one, what online features would you like to add to the current ones you do? So when I hear that, I'm thinking in an ideal scenario where budget was uh, no issue, uh, there was, I could hire as many staff as I wanted, you know, in an ideal situation like that, a fantasy situation, uh, I would have, you know, I would have probably two or three videographers that were constantly flying all over the country, maybe even all over the world, uh, internationally at times, shooting you know the top bodybuilders of the world the, the top stars of our sport or industry workouts interviews profiles lifestyle you know I, I would love to see a ton of that that's very time-consuming it's it's expensive you need someone that's gonna fly all over the place you also need to have great relationships with all these people to allow them to come and film and you know uh, that's one thing I would do I would probably do just a, a ton more videos more interviews uh, podcasts you know it's it's kinda hard to imagine though because I'm, I would still be just one person and Lord knows I could be working harder than I am now in terms of you know hours I mean I know there are people in this industry that work crazy crazy hours like 12 or more hours every day uh, I'm sure Kit Sanderson's like that Steve Blackman's like that I think even you know I'll give him credit Dave Palumbo's like that there's there's a lot of actually very hard working people in this industry uh, on the business side that put in insane hours. Uh, oh, I lost my thing with the pictures. So, yeah, I would have to be doubled or tripled. They would have to clone me to really pull this off. Or, you know, that's, that's not true. I could probably hire people that would do a great job. You know, obviously I'm not the only one that can do interviews. Giles does great interviews. Uh, you know, but I would have tons more stuff that currently it's just it's just not in the works. We don't have an unlimited budget. You know, things are things are tight all over the industry, and uh, that's that. So I'm going to move on to some questions I can actually have some fun with. Number two, with the knowledge you have now on bodybuilding, if you could go back in time and start again, what things would you do differently, and why? I probably would have put more emphasis on nutrition from the start. For the first couple of years I was bodybuilding, I really had the most vague ideas of, of proper nutrition. I, I wasn't eating enough. I was, uh, throughout my 20s, I'm pretty pretty certain, you know, all those years I was natural and I was bulking up to 230, I was way overeating on the carbs and just getting, carrying too much body fat. And, you know, I spent years doing that, at least 10 years. I would not do that ever again. I would eat, you know, find a balance where I was still able to gain, but I was not putting on body fat. And I didn't do that. I just ate, uh, you know, every meal I had a big bowl of rice. Or sometimes for a while I was putting raisins in my rice because it was plain white rice or plain brown rice. Oh, it was just the worst. So I would do that. I would have stayed leaner. I definitely would have paid more attention to warming up, stretching. Uh, you know, in my younger years, warming up was just, I didn't really warm up. Uh, I remember leg days. Uh, I was so eager to get to heavy squats for a long time. For years, I would do this. I would go in, I would put, uh, not even one plate, I would start with two plates on the bar, get under it, dip down for like eight, eight, ten reps, rack it. That was my warm up. I, Jose has often said he used to start with 315, but I would jump, you know, I was, I was young, I was healthy, my joints are in, so I could, uh, I could move some good weight back then, so I would do, you know, 315, 405, that's when I would bring the spotters over to help do part of the reps for me with 495 or more, so I also would have respected my joints more by not training in such low rep ranges much of the time. In my 20s, I definitely did a lot of very, very heavy lifting for just three to five reps. I did a lot of sets like that. Uh, any kind of a press, because I wanted to get the biggest numbers I could. I wanted to press the one, the 150s for chest and the 130s and 140s for shoulders and put 315 on the, on the you know, barbell and military presses. 
but I could only get a couple reps with them. But that was good enough for me because I wanted to say, well, today I did the, did the 140s, today I did 315 behind the neck press. Yeah, I did that. My rotators aren't too happy about that uh, all these years later. So I would have uh, shied away from that rep range. I don't think bodybuilders ever really need to get that low in the reps to accomplish what we're after. Even if you're in phases where you want to work on strength, it's just my personal belief. I, you can have your own opinion and other other coaches and experts, they all have their own opinion on this, but I wouldn't go below like the four to six rep range, and even then, only for shorter, limited periods, maybe like, you know, four weeks or something. So I did that for many, many years, and I'm sure that's where I did a lot of damage to my joints and connective tissues. Uh, when my tricep finally tore in 2011, you know, I learned it had been about halfway torn off years ago, years many years before that, and it basically healed up like that with the you know, half the tricep retracted up here and the tendons, I don't know what they were attached to. But, you know, the, the surgeon who who repaired my tricep in 2011, he had told me that once we opened up, we saw all these blunt blunt ends of the of the tendon. So you had actually torn this. And I'm sure that I was tearing it back in those, in my 20s, doing the low reps on pressing movements. I used to do weighted dips. You know, I'll never forget. Two plates was every, was every workout, 90 pounds. I could, I could bang out 10 good reps with that. Three plates. Okay, now four, six reps, if I'm lucky. Am I going all the way down? Probably even probably not with the four plates. A couple times I was being a moron, real moron. Because <laughs> I was always pretty much a moron when I was you know, younger in the gym. I was just doing stupid shit. Just a lot of stunt lifting, a lot of ego lifting. Um, yeah, I mean, that. Uh, like I said, that, I'm paying for that now. and. I don't know how much of current things like the arthritis and the this and that could have been prevented, but I'm sure a lot of it could have been. Um, so I, I probably also would have had phases. I would have taken more time off training. Let's put that in there too. I would have every at least, I've heard every, some guys like uh, Skip LaCour used to always talk about doing six weeks of intense training and then taking a full week off. I never, I could never get myself to stop training that, you know, that soon after. Uh, it For me, I would need at least 16 weeks or more before I felt like, okay, now I, now I probably need a break or I deserve a break. I would have taken more of those breaks. Probably every like 12 weeks, I would have taken a week off the gym. I think that would have helped me out a lot, get my tendons and connective tissues and joints, just a little break. And I would have factored in some more moderate training phases where maybe for uh, two weeks or so, every four weeks or six weeks, I would train lighter, you know, not necessarily light, but lighter, up the reps, uh, train a little, you know, a little rest, a little less rest between sets, make the, the weight feel heavier, things like that, that I didn't start really incorporating until I was older and I was already banged up. Uh, so those are, those are just a couple things. I mean, I could do a whole, every, every time I do one of these, I could talk about something I wish I could, would have done differently. You know, hindsight's twenty twenty. we all, especially because I started out in the pre-internet era, so, and I didn't really know any, anyone who knew anything. I didn't know any bodybuilders for the first couple of years I was doing this. So, yeah, I was just so clueless, so clueless. Yeah, anyway, you live and learn, right? Next question. Uh, what do you consider to be the features that make a gym a good gym? That's a great question because I am a snob about gyms. And, you know, when some people say that, they might be referring to the fact they need all these amenities they need steam room and a pool and this and that. No, I'm a snob uh, with equipment mainly. Uh, I will walk into any gym and all I really, I'd say 90, 95% of my concern is do they have all the equipment that I want, that I need uh, to get to get good workouts. Uh, and that's you know based on some things I can't do anymore or can't go as heavy on. So I rely on certain machines at this stage of my life more so than I would have 10, 20 years ago, certainly. So I'm looking for, first thing, I, you know, I want to make sure it's not a tiny little hole in the wall. Nothing wrong with those places if that's what you're into. I just, I'm a little claustrophobic. I need some space or I just, I start freaking out. Yeah. Um, so I want to make sure it's not tiny. There's some room to move around. The machines aren't all packed close together where you're going to, you know, do a press and you're banging into somebody next to you doing a row or something, you know. I've seen places that, where the stuff is packed that tightly where you do whack into each other at times. Certainly you have to like me meander through these things like a maze. You know, after Maze Runner, I don't I don't want to be anywhere near a maze. 
So then I look at the equipment. So obviously they're going to need the, the staples, the free weights. So they need to have uh, dumbbell racks. And I feel a good gym should be up to 150. Not that I necessarily couldn't function with anything, you know, 120s or something as the highest, but whatever. It's good. It, it shows that they really have a diversity of equipment and they're prepared for different strength levels because there are some people out there, some guys that can, that can use the 150s for a lot of different things. Um, so barbells, benches, incline bench. I'm looking for make sure they have at least one, hopefully more than one, squat rack. Uh, this place I go to now, Bayshore Athletic Club, one of the first things that impressed me about it when I walked in uh, years ago, it's in Weymouth, Mass, by the way. No, I'm sorry, Braintree, Braintree, Mass. Rows and rows of leg presses, like 10 leg presses in a row. You hook a left, uh, it's eight squat racks in a row, two power racks, uh, Smith machine. So I want to make sure all that's covered, that stuff. Right? So the free weights. Then I'm looking for a full full or pretty close to it line of the hammer strength line. I like a lot of those machines. Uh, they, they're they really good in in my point of view, where I use them for many years and, and more so today than ever, is as a good secondary movement. So say if I'm doing chest, I would do the first movement with probably dumbbells. Uh, so one, one good free weight movement and then the secondary pressing movement. The second one in the routine would be a hammer strength machine. And then I'd probably move on to some type of fly machine and then end with another kind of bench press machine. So I want to, and there's other machines, I want to make sure there's a decent hack squat that's, that's smooth and it's not going to give me knee pain. Decent leg presses, uh, just the type of variety, the variety of machines. I want, I want to see everything. Is there a seated leg curl? I'd really, I'd really like it if there's also a standing leg curl. Obviously they should always have a lying leg curl. Just There's a little checklist in my mind of things that I, I like to use on a regular basis and I know I'd be pretty upset if I could never use them. One of the things I used to look for was a pullover machine, but those are so few and far between, I don't even worry about that anymore. I just do them with a cable, a lat pull down bar on the cable stack. So I'm looking for the full line of machines and so equipment. Once I get the equipment out of the way, and if I'm pretty happy that it's, it's got a very nice variety of equipment, and you know duplicates are great too, like I said, multiple leg presses. You know, if everyone's waiting for the same bench or the same leg press um, on a, in a busy, busy time of day or night, it's, it's rough. Any, waiting for equipment when you're trying to keep a good workout base, oh, it's, it's a killer. It's a workout killer. So, you know, Montanari Brothers Powerhouse Gym is like that. Very, uh, very good range of equipment where they'll have 10 leg curls in a row, 10 leg extensions in a row. So you never, no one, you never have to wait. Even when I've seen that place really busy, nobody was waiting around. And I've heard, I've only, I've only been there a couple times. I've never trained there. Bevan C's Powerhouse in Syosset, I uh, hear. I did see the equipment they have there is pretty kick-ass, and I like the way the place is laid out. And unfortunately, both times I was there, I didn't get to train. Okay, so the next thing I look for, I need a general read on the atmosphere of the place. So you can pick that up pretty pretty quickly if you've been around gyms a long time. Is this a place where you know people are supportive of each other and people are working hard and trying to look and feel better, get stronger? You know, everyone's trying to improve themselves. And it's, when I say that, it doesn't it doesn't have to be necessarily competitors or people with awesome physiques because that's that's mostly genetics anyway. When you see a spectacular physique, but. You know, you want to see people that are working hard, and we're working hard is a good thing. It's not something people would discourage or frown upon or give you dirty looks for. Whereas if you go to a Planet Fitness and you have a really good physique and you're training really hard, I guarantee you, you're going to be getting so many, so many death glares from people. If you don't get kicked out of the place. So, you know, another just little things like. I'm looking to see are the weights put away or are these the type of members that they don't care, they don't respect the place and they, they just leave equipment all over the place and leave dumbbells all over the floor. There's a, I've said this before, but there's another gym that I still have a membership to. It's a not even a 10 minute drive. It's like an eight or nine minute drive from my house. And uh, I love the equipment. A lot of the pieces of equipment there I really like a lot. So equipment wise, the place is pretty damn good. But the atmosphere over the past year or two has gotten so bad that I barely ever go there. I'll, do, I'll go there for cardio and calves or something. I don't really, rarely do I train a body part there anymore or train with you know, weights. 
And it's because it's this uh, a whole new clientele to the gym, the me a new type of membership where they weren't putting the weights away. And that just drives me insane, insane. Uh, I was there doing cardio today and I saw uh, in the squat rack, in the very top pins, so this, what's that, like eight feet off the floor? There's a barbell, bad enough, 45 on each side. So whoever was, I assume somebody was doing shoulder presses with that. They had to be about six, five, six, seven in that range to be able to, to do that. So, and they left the weight there. So I hate that. So if I see a place that has members like that, or if I, if I see that uh, anyone that's in shape is going to be immediately scowled at, which, you know, I, I wouldn't go to a place like that. You know that that's what you're going to get when you walk into like a Planet Fitness or a workout world. You're going to get a lot of that because regular people don't like us. They don't like the way we look. They're, they're obviously, they're a little envious of people that certainly work much harder than them and are more dedicated to this and it's more of a priority to us than it is to them. And you know, that's their opinion. They can have their their low opinion of us if they want, but uh, uh, I don't consider it fair. Anyway, so the equipment's good, places decent size. Uh, I'll also check out the bathroom. If the place has like all clogged up toilets or something or uh, stinks of like urine or mildew, yeah, that, that's, that, that might be a deal breaker right there. You know, uh, Hardcore is one thing. I have I've been to some great hardcore gyms over the years, but uh, keep a nice restroom, people. You know, have toilet paper, have soap, have running water, paper towels or hand dryer would be good. A functioning toilet, uh, maybe a functioning urinal, but definitely a functioning toilet would be uh, would be something good. So anyway, that's what I would have. Once if if I'm satisfied with all those things, that's that's my gym. And also, you know. It can't be too far away, obviously. I'm not going to drive an hour every day to and fro, two hours driving a day to go to the gym. That's, that's not good use of your time for anyone who's got shit to do in life, which is most of us, right? Okay, uh, I'm just going to answer this last one for now because the other one's about my training and the, do I always use good form in that. that that's going to take a while. That might be a whole episode at one point. Cause that's I don't want to just brush through that so the last question I'll answer today if you could train with any pro past or present who would it be and why okay I would have trained with a lot of guys not a lot but I mean there's a lot of legendary people that I looked looked up to admired was inspired by so <clears throat> ideally I would want to be at my prime training with them in their prime so if I'm being a hundred percent honest I do believe my prime was probably 32 to 35 years old in that range. That's probably when I looked, I think I looked my best then. I was definitely strong, much, much stronger then, much healthier, my shoulder joints felt good, my lower back much, most of the time would feel pretty good. Uh, so those are, I would, those are the years I was probably moving the most amount of weight in the gym on a consistent basis in good form with good reps. I wasn't, by that point I wasn't doing three to five reps anymore. I mean, I would, six would be a pretty, uh, I would do six rep sets, but mostly I was in the eight to 10 range. I had learned, I, would already, I had already started to feel little aches and pains and little, little weird things, but you know, overall I was pretty healthy. So I would have trained with, uh, first of all, Arnold Schwarzenegger, no doubt. I mean, who wouldn't want to train with Arnold? You watched him in Pumping Iron and he just, he, was, he seemed like he was, he was intense as hell when he had to be for the sets, but in between, he was having a great time. He was joking, laughing, and, you know, you can turn it, you can turn it up. Most of us, are, I think, have that ability to turn it on and off like a switch. So it's okay to have a good time in the gym. I don't think you have to be like hoodie down and scowling and headphones in and shutting out the world. You, if, if that's what works for you, though, if that's how you get the best workout, do that, absolutely. And I think for some people that is the best method for them to get a, a great workout. I think uh, at least an equal amount of people are, are capable of having great workouts and having a really good time. And you know, why wouldn't you want to have a good time? I mean, this is uh, this is fun. I love training. I love going to gym. I've been doing it for thirty over thirty five years now. I still I still love it. It's it's you know it's always a good part of my day. It's it's usually the best part of my day. So, I mean, Arnold was someone, not, obviously he's iconic in so many ways, just for that reason alone, I'd want to train with him because he was 
huge inspiration to me uh, in Pumping Iron and his, his action movies that he did. So many of so many young men all over the world were inspired to pick up weights from him. Him and Stallone, I would say, during the, the 80s and the 90s with the action movies. So Arnold, for sure. Uh, next up, Legs with Tom Platts. And by no means, no means do I even uh, <laughs> pretend to dream that I could keep up with him exactly on legs. You know, I, the weight's definitely not. I mean, he was doing some crazy, crazy high reps with very heavy weight. But I think it would have been amazing to try to, to, try to keep up with Tom Platt's legs because I, I, don't, I don't know if anyone's ever trained legs harder than him. I don't know, maybe. I trained legs with Branch and that guy trains. That's, he was on the road and it was off season where he was, and he still was training like a, like a beast, beast. Uh, so Tom Platt's definitely, Mike Mentzer, another one. Mike was a big, big inspiration to me, uh, probably due to the fact that not only was he courageous enough to come up with this training system that he sort of you know, borrowed and, uh, and made his own from Arthur Jones, but uh, the guy had an amazing physique. He was incredibly strong. He was known for just this blinding intensity when he trained. He would to failure and far beyond failure with every set. So I think it would be awesome to train with him. Uh, I did get to train with Dorian, but Dorian wasn't really pushing. You still don't get me wrong. He's still very strong and everything. But uh, what is up, Larry? But Dorian uh, was not training for mass or anything like that. This is long after he retired. I would have liked to train with Dorian during his Olympia reign. Uh, same thing with Lee Haney. Uh, same thing, Rich Gaspari at his prime. Another, another man known for his, his training intensity. And, you know, that's probably it. I don't want to be greedy and ask for like a million people. Uh, those, those, those people I mentioned, I think would be would be pretty cool. So, uh, Glenn, thanks for all those questions. That last one. Uh, I didn't want to brush through it in a two to three minute response. I think it's it's important enough that it warrants its own, uh, if not whole video, a longer a longer explanation. All right, that is all. Thanks for watching, Ask Ron, and we'll talk to you next time.